Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy, and in today's video, I will be going over 10 interesting and unique ways to save money. Stay tuned. Tip number one, shop on Wednesdays. Many grocery stores launch new sales midweek, generally on Wednesdays, so shoppers who browse the aisles often get first access to new promotions and discounts. Plus, stores will frequently honor the previous week's coupons. Best of all, you can maximize your savings while also shopping during a relatively less cra <coughs> crowded time of the week. Tip number two, barter. Many Cario, what the f Mary Carto, Mary Carto, an author and retired editor in Missouri City, Texas, said that years ago when she was a single mom, she went through two separate layoffs and had to stretch her dollars as far as possible. So she bartered, for instance, her hairstyle was a first time mom. Oh shit. For instance, her hairstylist was a first time mom. Carto wanted to look her best for job interviews, and the hairstylist wanted somebody she could trust to watch her newborn son so her and her husband could go on some date nights. Carto would get her hair styled for free and babysit for free. Says it's a win-win situation for her and both her hairstylists. That is an option, but I don't know. Are you really saving money for hair? Just cut your own hair. I don't know. Also, it's for styling for... How many job interviews are you going to? How many times do you need to babysit like three times for one job interview? That seems su kind of stupid. I don't know. Tip number three put all unexpected income and financial gifts into a savings account. Even if you're past the age of receiving money for birthdays, unexpected cash can sometimes come your way. Miguel Cirel, a Miami business attorney who runs the personal finance website, I'm not going to say that, says that if you open a savings savings account you, for unexpected cash, you might be surprised at all the extra money that could wind up there. Deposit all unexpected income there, Ciro advises. I mean, things like product recall funds, a class action settlement refunds, you don't get it, but you will return an item money someone gifts you. Yes, that makes sense. Just money that you weren't unexpecting or counting on. He adds that you can use the unexpected income to splurge on something fun later. Or you could use it as a second emergency fund. Yeah. That's a great idea. Tip number four. Try the five dollar trick. Every time she received the five dollar bill, whether it be charged from a purchase or from her tips as a bartender, she put it away in a container in her house, she said. No matter what, if she got a $5 bill, it went in the container. At the end of the year, she had $4,000 in there. Spencer Tiemann says she started doing the same thing, and within three months, she had $1,200. It's funny the psychological trigger in your brain when you do something as simple as putting a singular dollar in a, in a bottle away. You don't think, you just do it. It almost game. What? She says. With that, you don't typically carry cash, you might want to look at Acorns, Chrome, or another app that will round up your purchases and make a dollar a credit card. Divert the savings account. Some of these apps don't cost money, but if you use them, you should save far more than you spend. With Acorns, you'll say spend a thousand, one dollar a year for an account under five thousand dollars with Chime. See, why not just save your money though? Why do you gotta go through all these steps? If you want to save money, just don't spend money. I don't know, that's kind of so... Tip number five, embrace the envelope system. With this approach, you can pay for everything in cash. I'm not sure if this is creative or just old school. Uh, money by paying everything in cash, she says. That, that's for literally pulling out the cash for their monthly budget and putting it to determine the amount of envelopes labeled for each category, such as groceries, entertainment, apartment, gym, and miscellaneous. Sometimes, she says, she would find extra cash in the miscellaneous section and splurge on something fun that month. This isn't a strategy I'd suggest employing forever, as cash aspect is actually kind of a nuisance, but it was a great way to see how much we spend, or you could just look in your bank history and then see where the money's going and, you know, not splurge on stuff you don't need but I don't know maybe I'm just stupid tip number seven ask if an item will go on sale we forget about this tactic because we're all focused on googling deals says Charles Thomas a financial advisor and founder of Intrabit and Eagle Finance in Charlotte North Carolina sometimes direct approach is the best he says 
If an item at the store you want to buy, find an employee and pose a direct but straightforward question. When does this go on sale? Sometimes employees don't know when items will go on sale. But Thomas says they're full of shit. He and his clients often had a lot of luck doing this. Retail employees rarely get this question by asking it. You'll be ahead by the past the time you know, he says. I actually agree with that one. Tip number eight. Try a no-spend holiday. Pick one day or two, or a week if you can manage it, and vow not to spend any money aside from regular bills. It can be very easy to go overboard at the supermarket or impulse shop on Amazon, but if you start creating your own non-spend holidays, you might retain the brain to spend less. This one's aimed at you, Roger. No spend holidays. Do you think you can do it? One day. No car parts. I believe in you. Tip number nine. Audit your expenses. Take a close look at everything you spend money on. Ask yourself if there's anything you can pay back. Maybe you have recurring expenses such as monthly subscription to a streaming service you barely use. Maybe it's time to look at your insurance and see if you're overpaying for anything. Or perhaps you've never noticed that you're eating out restaurants five times a week and it's a good time to start grocery shopping more often. Imagine how you spend money and then take action. That can result in significant savings. And going back to that tip of, you know, don't spend money on stuff you don't need. That's kind of a good way to save money. Yeah. Tip number 10. And the final tip. Turn your thermostat down. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, you should save as much as 10% a year on your electric bill by turning your thermostat down 7 to 10 degrees for 8 hours a day from a normal setting. You also might see a C. Whoa, your electric company offers a free energy audits. If you so, you'll send any someone out of their house and they'll point out the appliances that are energy hogs and ways you can home your make for it more efficient. What? If you so, they'll send somebody out to your house and they'll point out any appliances that make energy hogs and ways you can make your home more energy efficient. Granted, you often have to spend money to save money on electrical bills, but at least it won't cost you a cent to turn the thermostat down. See, that's another good one. If you buy a solar panel and you can have electricity for free, then you could actually make money off of electricity if all of your appliances are electric and you have enough battery storage plus a backup generator, you can cut down all your electrical utility bills by buying solar panels that cost a lot of money, but you could do that, and I think I'll do that one day. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and don't subscribe. I'll see you next time. Peace.